So now we are combining uh, everything uh, together into a single uh, simulation. Of course, I'm not going to simulate this in front of you because it, it, it takes uh, a few um, you know a few hours to simulate the whole thing. But just to give you an idea, we, we we're going to recapitulate everything and bring things bring all of this into the same context. So if I go into my uh, particle flow view, you'll see that here I've uh, I've kind of disabled. I'm just going to turn off the display of the parameters, turn, turn off the display of the depot and the description. Actually, I don't want to see that. Turn it off. So this is my particle flow system. At the top here, I used a da the cache disk operator. So the cache disk operator, I think I'm just going to display the, uh, the description here and the parameters for a second. The cache disk allows me to, at, uh, to, to create a file. And uh, you just point it to a to a to, to a folder or anything, and then once you have this, you say update. And what it's going to do is going to do your simulation. And you're you're going to get the, the visual display. It's going to update the viewport. But all of this will be recorded into a cache, and it's going to be saved on the drive. The beauty of a cache disk is that it uh, it takes very few seconds to load the scene, but then it goes on to the on the drive for every frame to get the update of the particle. So if you have a massive amount of particle like this in this case here, the scene is going to load very fast, but then as you as you scrub through, uh, you're going to get much better uh, response. Of course, in a system like this, it takes a few seconds to load every frame, but you still don't have to wait for the, the full simulation. You get a cache file. So once you've got it cached, what's going to be important is that you, uh, you turn off, you see that here, I've turned off all of my simulation uh, nodes. So everything that is MP shape, everything that is world is all turned off. Uh, so that everything re re regarding the, uh, the the Mass Effect simulation, it's all off. So that I'm sure that it's not getting at, uh, getting any type of calculation. It's only using the cached disk. So I'm going to turn this off for now, and we're going to go back to what we have. So at the top here, I've put the cached disk operator. I could also have put a cached disk disk in all of these nodes and separate the cache for all of these particle nodes. But in this case, I just created a big cache where everything is being calculated. It's uh, you know it's a matter of choice. And uh, uh, so here we go. So to go back in, in, in retrospective of everything we've done. So we've done pillar number one with uh, the geometry that was created or s uh, fragmented within um, 3ds Max. So we did Fracture Voronoi. So that's why we have here the birth group. And ad I added the material static here so that it, they have the same material look of the original pillars. But um, this is the idea. So we have a birth group and we did we see how we did set it up and we have a dust uh, system here where we emit more particles. And I wanted to reuse the same dust for all of the pillars. So I, the pillar number two that we created with the grid with a restricted volume and then with a uh, with the particle skinner, we use the same technique here. But at the end, when we spawn, we spawn the same dust. We don't have we, we, we could we use the same event. At the top of the bridge, you see that there's some details or some poles and some fences there. They're all separate objects. So what I did is I added a event here and I used a birth group and all of these objects are within that birth group. And it's just a simulation with a convex all and they have a bit of spin and it's a default. It's basically a default birth grid replaced by a birth group. So that's what we have at the top there. And here we have the road. We saw how we did simulate that. The grid, uh, we created the grid here. Uh, it, we created the shape and then we skinned to that and we added a few solvent there. And again, when the road breaks, when the, when we have a break in the road, we use the same dust or the same dust effect. I didn't have to redo it too many times. And we have the anchors here that just, uh, that use the MP switch. They're just staying there and they, uh, they are static. And the last thing at the, at the full, full bottom, uh, at the full left here, we have the water simulation. Again, it's a birth grid like we saw. We restrict it to a volume. We uh, check for the intercollision and then we check for the collision of the, uh, and we created a splash at the bottom there. So all of these have been simulated. They have all been cached to that, uh, to that cache file there. So now it allows me to go here and just say, I want to see different frames. And you can see that we, it, it's going to load as I get to a frame. It's not going to do the full simulation. It's going to load the particle at that specific time. If I go a bit further, you see that's going to take even longer because we create all these water splashes and it needs to load uh, and and load all of this inside of the viewport but you get you know all of the system all of this the separate elements that we've created they're all being simulated in the same environment and like i said when you simulate everything 
any everything in there needs to interact. So when this pillar is colliding and when this pillar is colliding and the bridge is colliding, we need to define how they're going to interact with each other. They're going to push each other and all of that. So that's why the cache disk is crucial because just to give you an idea, it took about, I think it's about a day it took me to simulate the whole thing to get all of these things interact with each other. But now as soon as there's a, um, any piece of geometry that falls into the water is going to have uh, interaction with the water. Uh, the water is going to be very uh, chaotic at some point. The bridge is falling down as well. So if I just go a bit further in the uh, in the simulation here, it's going to load other frames. But you see that I'm, I don't have to wait for the simulation to happen. It's just going to load the cache, uh, the files from the cache. If you want to see uh, it in action, I'm just going to go back here at the um, at the. I'm going to bring up the uh, the RAM player. I got it somewhere here. I'm going to open it up, and I did a test. Uh, whoops! I did a test for my previews and main simulation. I did one with only the particles. I'm going to load this one first, and okay. So we have it here. So I'm just going to press play, and you see that we have the full simulation. Then you see that the water, when the water is being touched, we get some water splashes. We get the water going in all directions, being very chaotic and all of that. So in order to show you with the, the, the full skin mesh as well, I've uh, rendered a preview. So this, is, this one is with the mesh. So this one here, as you can see, the, uh, the pillar number one, we use the particles as they were. So because we broke them inside of 3ds Max and then load them as particles. Uh, the uh, the the water here is being represented by a blob mesh. Here, the pillar, as you can see, it's been skinned to the particles. Same thing with the bridge here. The bridge is being skinned to the particles, and the rest at the top, it's all a birth group. So it's uh it's using the objects as they are. So if I just press play now, you'll see that we get the effect that we want, and the water is becoming very chaotic, and we got some water splashes in there, and all of that. So that's kind of the um, the idea when you want to simulate all of these things all together and create some interesting destruction sequences using particle flow with Mass Effects and all the new operators in Max 2014.